Hello and welcome to this live interaction with me Ashish Parekh and COVID-19 is the topic of discussion again but this time we'll be talking about one of the two weapons that people uh, are really understand about COVID-19. One of course everyone talks about social distancing and the other one is of course masks and these are the only two known viable options that actually can help us stay safe from COVID-19 as of now till a vaccine arrives. But having said that masks still, still show some uh, you know some sort of vulnerability as far as their efficiency is concerned and that is why a lot of people across the world uh, doctors as well have shown their concerns uh, uh, you know as far as traditional masks are concerned because there is a lot of misinformation about what sort of masks should a person wear and of course you know uh, uh, the ones which are costlier seem to be the best option but that is not always the case and it is just a, a matter of uh, the kind of material that is used that is uh, that that actually determines how safe you are from the virus but now uh, researchers across the world have started actually researching on the kind of masks that could actually save uh, us from the virus and now scientists have successfully produced graphene masks with an antibacterial efficiency of around 80% which can be enhanced to almost 100% with exposure to sunlight for around 10 minutes. Yes, now this has been published in a study uh, which has been uh, gone ahead and published in the journal ACS Nano and initial tests also have showed very promising results in the deactivation of two species of coronaviruses. This study has been carried out from the City University of Hong Kong and researchers have really gone ahead and given, uh, you know, published very promising results about this particular mask. But why was it exactly done? Well, the researchers have also said that commonly used surgical masks are not really antibacterial this may lead to the risk of secondary transmission of bacterial infection when people touch the contaminated surfaces of the used masks or even discard them improperly now you know a lot of COVID-19 deaths like we are talking about uh, a, a very huge chunk of them are caused by infections secondary infections and also comorbidities this is something that a lot of people don't really realize virus coronavirus is not the actual reason why a lot of deaths are occurring uh, in COVID-19 cases there are a lot of other factors that also come into the picture and these masks will probably help people stay safe from them but to speak more about this mask and what is the sort of uh, speciality that it has and how efficient can it uh, possibly be in the future i have with me our guest for the day dr sitesh roy so first of all uh, dr roy thank you for joining us and let's just shift our focus to masks again one of the most uh, popular and one of the most safest option of say, staying safe from coronavirus till there a vaccine but having said that a lot of uh, you know different uh, materials that are being used are also under question and there is a lot of misinformation about masks as well so firstly what do you think about this latest graphene mask that uh, these researchers have developed how uh, you know what 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 is its speciality and how efficient is it compared to the regular mask that we get at uh, uh, our local uh, you know uh, stores so ashish uh, in terms of masks there are the major options that we have are the uh, two ply or three ply surgical masks okay then we have something called the n95 masks and then we have the cloth or what are called the woven masks mm -hmm. now in each of these masks there is a different degree of efficiency or success in keeping the particles out and also keeping the particles in and clearly the N95 or N99 masks do the best. But as has been said, those are primarily for healthcare workers and the three ply surgical masks and the cloth masks are the ones that are most widely used and their efficiency can range anywhere from barely 20% to about 60 or 70%. Yeah. Now, if we had something like a graphene coating, Mm -hmm. Now, to first understand that graphite is basically carbon, that's what our lead pencils changed into graphite pencils. Yeah. And in graphite, there are many single layer, what is called a honeycomb structure, very mm -hmm. thin layers of graphene, mm -hmm. which is carbon particles, carbon molecules, which are there. Yeah. And such a, a film of graphene is coated onto a surgical mask, several layers of it using something called dual mode uh, laser okay. uh, it's a forward transmission technology by a few layers of graphene are put onto the mask and it has been found that this graphene has several benefits yeah. the first one of them is that it is highly what we call super hydrophobic hydrophobic means it repels, repels water, water. Yeah. when it repels water it keeps uh, the particles, the droplets that carry the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which causes COVID-19 away from the person. That's the first technology. 
The second thing is graphene in nanoparticles has what is called at the mi ultra microscopic level or ultra electron microscopic level has what is called rough edges or sharp edges. And these edges are supposed to also damage the structure of the virus or bacteria and prevent it because many of the studies were originally done with a bacteria called E. coli, which is, can be a normal commensal and it can also cause gastrointestinal infections. Yeah. The third mechanism by which this mask is very unique is that when a person wearing it goes into the sun and is out in the sun even for a few minutes, the temperature of the graphene layers of the mask increase up to 80 degrees Celsius. And at that temperature, it would deactivate or kill any virus or bacteria that's on it. Mm -hmm. So it certainly seems like a very good proof of concept study. Now, how much this can be practically put into applications and these masks can actually be used outside is something that is being studied. Mm -hmm. There have been certain masks that have already been made with the graphene coatings, but the scientific data with them is still a little missing. Okay. And remember that people have tried everything from cucumin, our very good old haldi, yeah. to silver nanoparticles before to try to make them antibacterial and antiviral. So, this certainly seems to have the science behind it, but we need some more data and some more experience with actually using them. Also, Dr. Roy, now this particular research team tested their uh, laser-induced graphene with E. coli and, you know, apparently they've achieved very high antibacterial efficiency as well, about 82% in this case. Also, in comparison to other masks, the antibacterial efficiency of activated carbon fiber and melt brown, uh, you know, fabrics can commonly, which, which are obviously used in other masks, were only about 2% and 9% respectively. So, this does uh, look like a very viable uh, alternative and something that could actually keep us safe from viruses. But having said that, Recently, in recent uh, you know uh, case studies as well, we've noticed how masks still, even if you're wearing a mask, even if you're uh, practicing social distancing, the virus is still spreading. So, how useful could it be, even if it actually comes out uh, and actually people started using it? How how useful can it be? So, I think the biggest issue, Ashish, is that people wear the mask, but they won't don't wear it properly. So, oh, for no. example, they'll wear the N95 mask, which will have a nose pin but they won't press the nose pin down to reduce the areas through which the virus may spread. Mm -hmm. They may wear a mask that is not well fitted. So there may be gaps at the sides or above from mm -hmm. which the virus could enter. Also, many people lower the mask below their nose, just cover their mouth or some even keep both of them open. And that's really why the masks are failing, not because the masks are not efficient. Not when yet. you combine wearing a mask with good hand washing or hand sanitizing, and social distancing, you can actually prevent the spread of the virus by, according to some studies, up to 90 or 95 percent. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more about the consistency of wearing it. And, and it's very interesting because the CM of Maharashtra was just in a live a little while back yeah. on his channel where he was even talking about saying that people wear the mask when they are by themselves, but when they are with their friends or family, they lower the mask and they do what they are doing. So yeah. that's really when you need the mask is when you are around people. And if you have a mask that has the antibacterial properties like graphene does or antiviral properties like graphene does, mm -hmm. and if you can keep it and use it correctly and at all times when you are around people, and do all the other precautions, I believe that you can make a difference in reducing the transmission of this virus. Exactly. Yes, like you've been saying, uh, it is also how people actually uh, use masks and also how strictly they follow the guidelines that are in place that determine how much the virus spreads or how we can contain the virus. Before we wrap up, Doctor, uh, one last word from your end to all the viewers watching right now because you made a very valid point right now. It is not just about how good a mask you buy, how expensive it is or how uh, how much of a technologically advanced one it is. It is all about how much of a, you know, how, how much of seriousness that you show towards wearing masks and also keeping yourself safe. So one last word to all of viewers watching right now about what they should do when wearing masks and what is the most important uh, protocol that they should follow as far as wearing masks are concerned. So when wearing a mask, one of the first things that's very important is never to touch the outside surface of the mask. It's very important to hold it by the straps and wear it as much as possible. Even while taking it off, you're holding it by the straps, never touching the outside of the mask because the outside of the mask can carry respiratory droplets or infectious material. 
Uh, and that's a very important thing. The second important thing is when you take off the mask and you're going to discard it, discard it in a covered, closed garbage bin or in a proper garbage bin where somebody else may not come in. Like, you know, people may just throw the mask on the streets. I've mm. seen that happen, unfortunately. Yeah. And that's something that people should not do. Uh, always change the mask. There are certain masks that can be washed and reused. Cloth masks, for example, can be washed and reused. And uh, some that cannot be washed and reused. So know whether your mask is one because I've seen people wear very, very dirty and filthy masks that probably need to be washed and cleaned and they are not. And it gives a false sense of security that you're protected when you're actually not. Yeah. So take care. It is your own life. It is the life of the people around you, your loved ones, your friends, your family. And don't get what I call mask fatigue. People feel that they've done it for too long. <laughs> now, because we are unlocking, all the risk is gone and they give up taking the precautions. And that's a bad idea. And, and don't believe most of the stories that tell you that wearing a mask can shoot your carbon dioxide levels in your blood up and make you sick. I would say that if you're exercising, you have to be careful because you increase your oxygen requirement. And if you're wearing a very thick, heavy duty mask, then you may run into problems. But if you're wearing something like a surgical mask or a cloth mask, generally, you won't have too much trouble in breathing or in accumulating carbon dioxide that can be unhealthy. So in, in short, keep wearing your mask. It's your best bet to keep yourself safe and keep everyone around you safe because you're not just protecting yourself, you're also protecting others from you. So that's my message, Ashish. So thank you, doctor. Thank you so much for your insights. So there you have it. That was Dr. Roy clearly explaining to us about the benefits of masks and also what are the conditions that you need to follow to in fact get benefited from the mask. So if you if you are also not following all of these or in, in case you know anyone who's been following instructions from the WhatsApp University, make sure you send out the right message and also all of these developments are good, are something that needs to be appreciated. But also at the end of the day, no matter how good a mask you wear, it will only work when you wear it properly. On that note, it's me, Ashish Parikh, signing off. Do let us know what you think about this video and also leave your comments in the comment section below. And also don't forget to like, share and subscribe to News9 Digital. Thanks for watching.